Okay, okay. Um, well, hello. Thank you all for coming to this talk today. Um, with the ominous title of, yes, you can be the person who talks to anyone. Uh, so we'll see what we can do about that. Um, you will walk out of here not with a personality transplant. So sorry about that. <laughs> but perhaps we can cover a little bit um, about what holds us back from speaking to people, from especially speaking in another language, um, and kind of coming out of our own little shell. Um, and perhaps we can look at a few techniques and practice methods for making speaking easier. Um, okay, and I'm going to kind of just launch into this. Uh, just in case you don't know me, doesn't surprise. Um, um, <laughs> my name is Kirsten. I'm originally from Germany, but I live in the UK. Um, I write about languages. I have a podcast where I talk about languages. I teach languages, and I, I teach people how to learn languages. Um, that's my website up there. And I am a pretty extroverted person. So when I got the idea for this talk, it's partly because I am married to a very, very introverted person. And one of the things that he really admires about me um, is that I can talk to anyone, apparently. Um, <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> um, so I figured I'll, I'll kind of see if I can put something together about, well, you know, like anyone can talk to anyone. It's, it's just talking um, and look at how. And when I first thought about this, I realized that you know, speaking, it's, it's like this massive desire that we have inside us. And speaking a language, it, it is often, you know, if you teach, you'll probably have heard this. If you're talking to people who are not polyglots, but to be honest, like also polyglots, like we all want to speak our language, right? That's where it's at, really. Like nobody learns a language and goes, I want to write poetry. Um, I, I mean, if you do, I love you, but most of us don't. And language speaking, it's about performance, you know, it's kind of showing yourself and showing others what you're capable of. It's about connecting, you know, human connections are made usually in conversation, in person. Um, it's obviously about interaction and kind of getting better at this. And um, I was thinking about this when we were, you know, when we were first meeting yesterday. Um, even though in a polyglot gathering we can't all talk to each other, almost what, like half of you seem to have, and me too, had like t-shirts on with messages written on them. You know, some kind of, I speak Esperanto, what about you? Or, you know, like whatever it is. And I think it's because as humans, we all have something to say, right? So you want to say it. And speaking is the key to that. And it's also the key to really encouraging our own curiosity and learning more about other people. So in short, we really want to do it. Now, here is uh, maybe something that speaking isn't, but that often people think about, which is um, this sort of ideal image. It's like being the life of the party. You know, that's like the extroverted, everybody loves you kind of image, or to be completely fear-free, right? So when I wrote the title of this talk, um, and if you looked at it in the booklet, and you're here because you think I'm going to make you either one of those things, just forget it, because that is really about as realistic as, you know, when you Google those pictures, or when you see those pictures of um, the lady laughing with salad. <laughs> you can Google those, they're, they're in many adverts, and I think they are as far from reality, at least my reality, as you could possibly be. I don't sit at home and laugh at my salad. <laughs> And I don't think anybody does. But, you know, so I think this is something to bear in mind, you know. And I think, to be honest, this isn't really what we want, most of us. Like, you don't, if you want to speak another language, you want to connect with somebody in another language, that doesn't mean you want to, at the same time, become this personality transplanted, super confident lady magnet or whatever it is, you know, it's just, that's not the same thing. And I think that's something to really, really bear in mind. So, because in reality, conversations, unless you're talking to like a massive group of people and they're all sort of um, 
paying attention. Um, but in reality, you know, conversations between two, three, the more people, the messier. You know, conversations are messy. People interrupt. People talk over each other. People don't know what to say. Um, and it's not even about speaking a foreign language. Conversations in any language among natives are really messy because we don't know each other that well and because our thoughts don't necessarily work in that way. And also, this is something I often think about um, when, when it comes to this idea of gaining more confidence or like becoming different through a different language. Um, I know there is science about like this personality change thing, but I think it's highly overstated because ultimately I believe that wherever you go, there you are. Um, and that means essentially no matter what we do, no matter if we travel the world, no matter, you know, like if you win the lottery, essentially you're still going to be you. So really you kind of have to make friends with you um, before you can even think about becoming somebody else or like what a language will do for you. So language learning, for s sometimes I see people really think of it as the holy grail of happiness um, and I think it just isn't that. So we all, I think we all feel challenged, you know, we are, we're all struggling. Um, I am, like I said, I am a person who finds it easy to talk to people. I am right now absolutely terrified. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is challenging, and it is, you know, like, I, I just spoke French to Mathieu, which didn't help my nerves at all, <laughs> and I'm really, I'm really not great at it. Um, and it's, you know, it's difficult, and one of the reasons, one of the angles, I've sort of got three angles I want to address, um, that are ways in which we maybe tell ourselves a story, maybe make even an excuse sometimes, and think about why speaking isn't for us, or actually we put hurdles in our own way. So these are sort of misconceptions that I see in people. Um, yay. Okay, the first one, the first one is to think, well, I'm introverted, therefore I don't like, you know, like it's harder for me because I'm introverted. My personality stands in my way. And this can go to the extent where you're thinking, well, your personality can stand in your way to the point where you don't speak to anybody. But that's okay, because you're introverted, right? The world's not made for you. But actually, um, extroverts struggle too. So this is introvert qu quote from, from my husband. Um, the other quote was, I don't want to accidentally call your mother a donkey. <laughs> um, but he says, I fear looking foolish. I fear saying the wrong thing. And, and then I fear people not liking me for it. So I just never get out of my head. Like, I don't even start. I don't know what to say. I don't know what's the right thing. Like, and ultimately, what's underneath that is, what can I do so people will like me? But as an extrovert, what, what happens, or at least what happens to me is sometimes I am like out of the gate, and I have said whatever is in my head. And I don't even know who's <laughs> nodding here. I don't even know what I've said until it's like there. And then I'm looking at it, and I'm like, huh. That makes no sense. <laughs> and the worst thing is, um, I think you're, you're pretty reserved, right? He didn't smile. He didn't nod when I spoke French to him. <laughs> he clearly hates me. It's, it's really freaked me out. Because <laughs> so, I'm used to kind of reading other people by how they react to me. And thank God you're all smiling. <sighs> it's, you know, <laughs> it, it, the fears... And the thought underneath are the same, right? It's still, what can I do so people will like me? So whether you're introverted or whether you're extroverted, I think you don't get a free card either way because we both sides, both sides really struggle with this. It's hard. You know, it's hard to put yourself out there and to try and make somebody else, or to think you're trying to make somebody else like you. This is really difficult. So my advice would be to really work with your strengths so for me, my, my strength is like coming up to people and just talking. I know this and I have long accepted that it's not going to be good necessarily, but I'll just do it, right? Because I can deal with the consequences. But I often think, I often admire the introverted side. I admire the people who know what they're going to say before they say it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this is, that's, that's a real skill. You know, it doesn't, have, it doesn't mean you have to compose the perfect sentence. But if you've got a rough idea of what you're going for, that really, really helps. Um, 
And it's a strength that you have, so embrace it, kind of go with it, you know, and don't throw yourself into an environment where you're not going to thrive. So that's kind of my next point, is this idea of like perfectionism, which often comes out as, um, oh, I'm, I, I will do that, right? I will get a language exchange partner um, as soon as I'm like through chapter five of this thing, <laughs> or like as soon as I'm good enough to like speak in the past tense, present tense and subjunctive, then maybe I'll get a partner. Or it would be something like you're thinking, well, first I should really listen to every single glossica ever before I ever talk to someone. So this, th that is ways that perfectionism can creep in. It's also when you practice skills that, you, that you're really good at um, already, but you don't practice the skills that are a little bit harder for you. I noticed this in my students with writing. Right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a broken record with what I call the core skills, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. You've got to practice all four. You're not going to get fluent otherwise. Um, and writing is one of those that people just don't do. And I think it's partly because it's a focus and cognitive effort. You know, it's a faff to do. Um, but also because when you write, it really, really shows up your mistakes. You know, like when you speak, it's kind of ephemeral. And, but if you're writing, you've got nowhere to hide, and I don't think people necessarily like that. Um, but again, you need, to, you need to work with all skills. You need to get out of thinking first, I've got to do that. But what you don't need to do is like follow advice that isn't right for you. For example, you don't need to go to a meetup if you know you don't do well in groups. You know, if, if groups kind of freak you out or you don't want to, like, you're scared of that messy conversation of five people talking over each other, don't do it, right? Don't start with it. You can always go there later. Uh, you don't need to practice your foreign language on a complete stranger. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit more in a minute. Um, that's not going to make you any better at it. And you don't need to really wing it. You know, you can prepare a little bit, you can write a script, so winging it, just in case, um, is essentially what I do. <laughs> Which is, you just rock up with very little preparation and then just go with whatever you have available at the time. Which can terrify some people. Um, and if you're that kind of person, there is, just because you're doing one of those three things doesn't mean you're, you're any better, you know, so don't bother. The one thing that you do need to do in order to talk to people is talk. That is pretty much it. Um, and the last point is um, there's something, so native speakerism is usually when you don't practice your language with people who are necessarily better than you, when you seek out the native speaker of a language and you believe that they naturally have all the answers. So, for example, you're learning German and you really want to practice on a native German speaker and you think a, na a native German speaker is instantly going to know what you're doing wrong in all the cases um, and the pronunciation rules and they're going to be able to help you just by virtue of being a native speaker. That is BS. That doesn't work. Um, but what I think with that comes in language learning sometimes and particularly when we want to speak and we want to kind of come out and talk um, and sort of connect with people and impress people and yeah, you know, I'm getting myself fired up and I'm going to take a challenge. Um, sometimes we forget the other person, right? That they are somebody who isn't necessarily here to teach you. So what I find is, uh, what I find this is, this is a big cause of the they switch to English problem, right? You're going to a country, perhaps you're going to, I don't know, Thailand, and the first uh, service employee that you see, maybe somebody in like getting your rickshaw or somebody in a shop or something, you're already, you're like, you've got your tie practiced and you come in there with your little script and you're like, no, 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 I don't, I can't speak Thai. <laughs> but you know, like, and you're expecting them to be like, not just your perfect practice partner, your patient, calm, but also your teacher. Whereas that person just has a job to do. You know, it, they, are, they are just not in that state of mind right now. They're going to switch to English because, seriously, it's easier. There's a queue behind you. I can't be bothered with this nonsense right now. Um, or you expect them to applaud you and be like, oh, my God, your tie is so 
good. Wow. Yeah, you must be a really worthy person. Uh, or you expect them to judge you, right? I've switched to English. Um, he didn't smile. Must hate, must hate me. Really, really judging me. So we all do this all the time. We project our own feelings and insecurities on the other person. But very, very often, um, looking for the native speaker and making like your next best native speaker the judge of whether you're good at this and the judge of whether there is like time and you know whether you're having a good conversation whether you're a good conversationalist i think that's like the road to hell that's a really really bad idea it's like when people um set themselves the goal of having a conversation or like i mean i'm personally I'm a bit worried about like add one challenge just because the goal is the 15 minute conversation because I think sometimes people can misunderstand that as the end goal but really I think that almost fetishizes the conversation to a point where you think that's the whole point of learning a language when really in my mind that language conversation is a is like one step one milestone on the road to going ever ever further um, and this whole idea of feeling like a native I don't know, I mean, I've lived in the UK for like 14 years, I speak English like this, um, ich bin Deutsche und ich komme mir immer noch nicht vor wie native, I still don't feel like a native speaker, you know, and it's, I don't, I just accept it's never going to happen. So this is the idea of waiting for something to happen that might never happen. So don't have an answer to that, just be careful. So how can we get out of that kerfuffle? Oh, hang on, I've got a thing. Ta -da. Okay. So one of the big uh, issues that comes up is insecurity. And insecurity manifests in many, many ways and comes up in many, many thoughts that we have. So the feeling is usually a feeling of fear. You might feel the fear in your body. I do right now. Um, and the thoughts that it kind of comes out as um, often take the following form. Number one, mind reading. Mind reading is when you think somebody else is thinking something and they haven't given you any indication that that's what they're thinking, right? So this is that idea of like, Matthew doesn't like me because my French is dodgy. Um, it's really, really bad. It's really bad. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know what he thinks. I don't know at all what, what the person is thinking about me. When you're practicing your language on another person, or even if you're not practicing language, you're just having a conversation and you're not really getting much from them, it can be really easy to start projecting and to start imagining ideas that they have about you. Uh, the second issue is personalization. And personalization is when stuff happens that's got nothing to do with you, but you think for some reason you caused it. Like, if you walk out, that's probably my fault. But it might not be, you know. Um, and so anything that happens, or if like the fire alarm goes off, must be because I'm terrible at this. Um, these things can really cripple us. These things can really break us down. They are, they are thoughts that are dangerous, dangerous. Um, and I think they hold us back in conversations once they creep up, creep up and we give them a lot of space. Uh, the final one is emotional reasoning, which is when you feel a certain way, to think that that is fact. So if you feel like you're going to mess up, it's a fact that you're going to mess up, which isn't truth. It's your emotions feeling like, like reason, feeling like you think it's a fact. You know, like my French is clearly not good enough is actually just a thought that you have um, and there is no external indication. So the way that we deal with this is in, or, I mean, there's many ways of dealing with it, but some tips for dealing with it. Number one is put the thought on trial. And when somebody is on trial, we know that we look for evidence of whether the accusation is true. So really look for indications and wonder, is, this, you know, is, there, is there any reason for me to think that this is true? And if there isn't, then perhaps it's just something you're telling yourself. Uh, the second idea or the second way of dealing with this is to act as if. And that is acting as if you're somebody more confident, for example. Right? So think of somebody who would never have this problem. Think of somebody who is, who you think would never possibly think the thoughts that you're thinking right now that are sort of, you know, tor torturing you in your mind. And think what would they do in this situation? How would they act? And just pretend you are them. 
or even just pretend you're a more confident version of you. You know, like pretend you're extroverted can be a good help in the moment, a good crutch, if, you, if it helps you adopt that behavior. And the more you act as if, the more it's going to become true for you because the feedback that you're getting from other people helps you readjust the way that you view yourself and the way that you view conversations. And finally, don't close the gap, which is that gap between lady with salad and you. <laughs> <laughs> assuming it's not the same. Um, so don't aim to become this ideal life of the party version. Instead, try and prepare yourself by thinking a realistic thought. So you want to say something neutral, like, I'm probably going to mess up, I'm probably going to mess up at least seven sentences, I'm probably going to get halfway through a sentence and then not know what to say, and, uh, but it's going to be okay, the other person won't run off or something like that. So you kind of want to think something neutral or go like, well, at least I've got the vocab for this down. You know, try and be as factual as you can because usually in our heads we make things worse. Um, so I, I, I struggle with insecurity. I, I'm crazy extroverted. Apparently that makes me look confident, but I really struggle with this. And particularly um, acting as if and putting the thought on trial are very, very helpful methods for me to kind of get over it. Um, okay, practice tips. If you are very hesitant to speak to people, we've already said don't, don't just go up and speak to a stranger, don't go up and speak to a group, don't necessarily seek out the native speaker, instead practice perhaps even by yourself. There are many ways that you can get your mouth and ears and head really used to what you sound like in a foreign language before you really need that feedback. So I really like uh, both Glossica and I'm a, I'm a Welsh learner, so I use Say Something in Welsh. There's also a Say Something in Spanish, Cornish, Manx and other languages no one cares about. Um, but you know, so the Say Something in series is really good. Glossica is a similar concept where you hear a sentence, you repeat it. Or you hear a sentence in your native language, you say it in the foreign language. And then you get the feedback of whether it was right. It goes at some speed. It's got spaced repetition built in. I really like Glossica. Uh, reading aloud is a great way of just getting used to making those sounds. Um, helps, especially if you're reading out loud something that you have written. Or just record yourself. And then it's up to you. It's like Lindsay was saying yesterday. You want to be you know, seeking out the mistakes. Um, but it's, it's really up to you recording yourself whether you put yourself on social media and actually let the world loose. People love correcting people. Um, or whether you just kind of go, okay, and that's that. Or well, something my husband used to do was record himself and then listen to it back sort of almost like a podcast. Um, and that was really good vocab practice for him, but also a good way for him to feel that he's a German speaker because he heard himself speaking German so much in his own voice. This is great feedback for ourselves. Um, second point, create a safe space. So again, this is about being somewhere calm, being somewhere where you're not rushed, right? So your ideal conversation practice is not on the bus when there's a queue behind you. Your ideal conversation practice is somewhere calm um, and really where you have time to think. Uh, I, I would suggest especially getting a tutor for this kind of thing because a good tutor gives you a sense of, or well, hopefully gives you a sense of confidence and safety and time, right? You're paying them to listen to your struggle. You're not paying them to judge you. You're not paying them to teach you. You're partly paying, to them, paying them to listen to you kind of struggle on and suffer on in this language um, and to, to still find something good to say about it. At least I tutor and that's something I look for with my students. Um, and the second point of that is practice with a safe person. My safe person for Welsh at the moment is called Gareth. He's over there. He can be pretty intimidating. But it's like... So out of deg, <laughs> out of ten, how frustrating am I to practice with? Now a hanner. What, what does that mean? Dimo gubble, dimo gubble. Not at all frustrating. Yeah. I feel like an eight almost all of the time. Oh. <laughs> but you know, like I, I feel, I feel really, 
I feel bad, you know, I feel bad because I, I can't speak Welsh fluently or anything like that. And I'm just kind of there and I'm like, you know, like all of us, I'm just struggling along and trying. Um, but I'm totally expecting Gareth to be incredibly frustrated with me a lot of the time. But it is a person... <laughs> I'm okay with him being frustrated. <laughs> you know, like, this is a person I, I think will still talk to me, will still like me, um, even if I am a frustrating experience in, in a moment or other. Um, and I think that is what I mean by a safe person. Try and find a person who is uh, somebody that you trust to not make you feel bad about yourself. So, again, tutor for me. Um, something that introverts apparently value uh, is writing a script. Now, writing a script, particularly um, when you're first practicing a conversation, I know that there is advice in the sort of speak from day one style methods to do that as well. I've tried it. I've, for me personally, I find it frustrating because I just diverge immediately anyway. Um, and, and I kind of feel like, well, I'm just saying dumb things here. Um, but at the same time, it gives you something to start from. It gives you something that you know is correct, and it might give you something to fall back on. So if you feel secure with that, do it, you know. Um, and I have previously, like, sort of written little diary entries and then read them out to Gareth in, in a language exchange. And then it did make me feel good, because like, I've just said, like, without hesitation, five Welsh sentences in a row. Um, because I'd written them, but it still makes you feel good. So it's all about what makes you feel good. The better you feel, the more you're going to do that. Do that. Okay, and finally, uh, get a lot of input and vary your input. So if you've got one tutor and, he, and that person is your one source of language input, especially if that's the one source of language conversation, you might get really used to that person's voice and accent which then puts you in a risky position of not understanding other people who speak differently. Um, so it's, it's impossible to speak without listening. Listening is important, um, but I think if we, if we keep it to just listening to one person or we keep it to just talking to one person, it can become risky. Oh, excuse me a sec. Okay, now conversation skills. Um, these are a few tips once you're actually caught in the conversation. Number one, if you forget a word but you think it'll come to you or you want to think of a different way of saying something, try and um, buy yourself, just buy yourself some time, you know. Try and um, be comfortable with the attention being on you and maintaining that attention on you. You can slow down, you can do pauses. Never underestimate the power of just repeating the last word somebody said back at them. That's really <laughs> useful. Um, especially if you say it back to them in a questioning tone. They're not going to think you can't speak their language, they're just going to think you don't know that word. Unless it's you or something, but you know, they're just going to think you don't know that one. Um, but you know, like just if you're stuck, repeat something back at people. Um, or use the power of um, um, you know, just for a second while you're buying yourself some time. Number two, you don't want to just do the, hello, I'm Kirsten, I'm from Germany, other boring things. Um, you try and volunteer a topic, try and find something to talk about. And you can just do that next point by asking questions. This is a great conversation skill. It's better if you listen to the answers as well, which is where I struggle sometimes. But ultimately, asking questions, being curious, that's why we talk to people, right? People like to talk. Um, so that really helps. Next step, this is something Lydia just mentioned in her um, talk, which is try and simplify what you're trying to say. You know, if you're struggling to come up with something really profound and smart, you're gonna, what happens is you compose in your head for so long that you miss your turn in conversations. Especially in groups, there's a lot of turn taking. Um, and if, once you've missed your turn, you're gonna start panicking more and getting more frustrated. So it helps to just go like, it's nice. And then, you know, you can say something profound later. There is no scarcity in other people's attention. They're gonna pay attention to you as long as it takes, 
but at the same time, they're not going to wait for you till tomorrow, not in a standard conversation. So simplifying what you're trying to say can really help. Um, and you can admit to them that it's difficult for you. That can buy you some goodwill. You can say, I'm learning your language. You can say, I think I'm okay. You can say, I'm, I'm going to try my best. You can say something like, I have forgotten how to say this. Or you can even at any point just really take control, advocate for yourself and tell them to stop. Now it's time to switch to English because your brain hurts. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. That doesn't mean you don't know their language. That means you are at capacity, which is human. And actually, it's really safe and good to respect that kind of thing. Um, so the more, you know, it's the same as me standing here and telling you I am terrified. I'm a bit better now. <laughs> But, but, you know, like, it, it helps me as well, but I just want to get it out into the open. So a bit of vulnerability can help a lot. Um, finally, keep attention on you when you need it. You, for example, if you just need a second, so this is similar to buying yourself more time, it helps to sort of just hold your hand up, you know, and just maintain the attention on you and use your body language in that way. So communicate perhaps with a bit more gestures, communicate with your face, you know, just try and keep the attention on you if you feel fear that otherwise everybody's going to move on and that you're going to be left behind. Um, and finally, smile. <laughs> I, I really, like, when people, when my husband's like, how can you talk to people? I'm just like, well, I don't know, I just turn up and smile and say something stupid. But it really is, like, smiling is non-threatening. Smiling is international. I think there's a cheesy quote about smile is something in every language. I can't possibly get it together now. But, you know, smiles are... There we go. <laughs> that was Sarah with the cheesy quote. <laughs> I'm the same. <laughs> my, my best Slovak word is, Slovak word is like... That's all, that's all you need most of the time, right? Because I think it's helpful to remember that even if you are absolutely fluent in their language, doesn't mean that they're going to like you, right? That's not the same. Being great at somebody's language is not the same as getting them to like you. Smiling at somebody, probably you have a better chance. Okay. Um, if you are the mantra kind of person, or if you feel like repeating a sentence in your head, or you want, you know, like if you're in a real throes of panic, and you just want to repeat something to yourself over and over, um, something I tell myself is, well, I'm good enough, you know, like, because am I good enough is the question of life. Um, you can think, I'm good enough to be just right here doing this. That helps me, but you may want to, you know, experiment with a mantra as in just a sentence you can repeat to yourself in your mind. And finally, remember, you know, you, you're learning a foreign language. You're pretty awesome. And that also means you're really capable. You're capable, you're patient, you've put in the work. You know, remembering your own capability can be the step between trying and not trying and then having miraculous results or being the same. Um, and you don't, need to pe you don't need people to think you're oh so impressive. You don't need people to think you're a genius. That's not what we're here for. We're just sort of aiming for medium right now. Um, and that is really how you talk to anyone. <laughs> so aim for medium. <laughs> okay, if you want to, if you want to know a little bit more, you want to try some stuff, um, there's Language specific, say goodbye to shy by Shannon Kennedy. She writes a website called Eurolinguist with an E at the end. Um, so she's written a book and there's a course that goes with it called Good Say Goodbye to Shy that I think is very good. Um, Daring Greatly is like life changing to read. It's really, really great, great book. It's written by Brene Brown. Um, she's also done a TED talk if you haven't got time to read books. Um, and you could try and have a play with the Mood Notes app. The Mood Notes app is um, a cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, like a little CBT app, which basically lets you, prompts you to put in a little thought, say how you're feeling, and then it helps you do that thing where you put the thought on trial. Um, yeah, and if you want to follow me on the internet, there we go. That is essentially, I did okay for time.